Okay, we're back, and another example of a boring sphere here with a wave applied. But this is a good uh, proof of concept, keeps things simple. Um, what we've got here is, and this is pretty pretty slick, this is not, not metaballs, these are polygonal surfaces. What's driving this is I started with a default sphere, broke it up into separate polygon regions, especially up here towards the top, and put shapes on each of those pieces that resembled kind of a cracked mud effect. You'd see it on a riverbed, a dry riverbed, that sort of thing, where the edges curl up, and then I pull those surfaces away from the main body of the sphere. Uh, then I, so I had all these fragments. You can see all these here. Uh, then I, what I did was I merged all these together back into the same sphere, but uh, now I have all these effects applied to these guys. And then I use the proximity weight map uh, to drive the shape. So if you weren't aware of this, uh, this is a pretty cool um, feature. Under shape, there's this modulate shape key with weight map. And we've had this for quite a while. Now, in the context of a static weight map, something we're used to dealing with, it's kind of neat. You can just paint your shape into existence using weight map. But that's, you know, it's, it's useful. But when you when you put it into a dynamic setting like this it becomes much more uh, it just becomes a lot cooler to use so to finish that up uh, once I merged all those pieces together here's another crazy thing uh, as you can see here in the in the uh, Explorer believe it or not you can uh, merge you can clone a surface uh, scale that surface or I use the push op to push out the the vertices invert it and then merge it back to the original that it was cloned from. <laughs> so that's what's going on here. So if you look in my merge, uh, I've turned on blend. And so if I turn that off and I res this down, you can see then I have these wacky, uh, it's trying to, well, let me pull this back. There you can see the separate surfaces. And if you go far enough, I, I think I kept it at the default of 0.5 and then turn on blend you get a thickness so this is really uh, a pretty neat thing that you can do with clones I, I'm not sure if this it's legal <laughs> I don't I don't think the, the developers would they'd probably be scared if they saw what I was doing with this but uh, it's I've, I've had a few render issues with it but it's pretty solid so I've, I use it for quite a few cool effects uh, so that's what's going on here, is you've got a couple uh, fragments merged together, that's cloned, and then merged back with the, the other merge. So that's, that's what you're seeing here. So uh, if I show the weight map, in addition to driving all the shapes that make up this surface, I'm also using the, a new weight map on this derivative surface to drive uh, the range of influence of this wave, and I think another push op so that I get some more, uh, a little bit more ballooning effect on these edges. So this is really a, a pretty cool example of how you can really, by using dynamic weight maps, you can take things into a whole nother level that you just can't do with static. So uh, this is a great example of that. So let me pull up another scene. Actually go to my recent <clears throat> so for shapes again and like everybody else I think uh, I typically use uh, ZBrush to paint detailed heads and that sort of thing using the same mesh so I can morph between those heads and this is an example showing how <clears throat> I've got a shape from a different sculpt uh, on this head and then I'm wiping that in with these weight maps. So another example of how these um, that uh, shape, modulate shape can be used. So if I pull this up a little bit here and then scale it, you can see. So you can kind of wipe in your effects. Now this is using again nulls with rings that kind of tell you what the range of uh, effect is but you can also wipe in geometry and with geometry it uses the points of that geometry to dictate where the weight map gets applied so you can wipe things in and have them stay whereas this it comes in it goes out you know you move this in 
you move it out, it goes away. But if you want, say, to wipe an effect and have it stay within a region, you can actually use geometry to do that. So I'm going to wrap up this session uh, on shape modulation using uh, the proximity weight map and get into some other examples.